Good morning, everybody. And for those who don't know me, I'm Julian Gray, Director of the Southwest Coast Path Association. And I'd like to warmly welcome you all to this uh, Path to Recovery webinar for tourism businesses along with one of the world's great trails. As you can see from my backdrop, I'm speaking from the Rain Peninsula in Southeast Cornwall. And it's great to see representation from many different parts of the visitor economy joining us today. I'd like to thank our speakers who are joining the team to present the webinar today, tourism specialist uh, Nell Barrington from Barrington Associates and Russ Peak from Western Discoveries Walking Holidays. I'd like to start with a bit of virtual housekeeping. We're running this webinar using Zoom, but there are differences in how Zoom looks in a webinar rather than a standard video conference. Firstly, uh, you, the audience, can't see yourselves and you'll be on mute during the webinar. However, there are two ways of engaging with us uh, and other participants. At, a, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see two icons for chat and Q&A, and it looks like some of you have already seen, found chat and are introducing yourselves, which is great. Uh, and also you can comment during the sessions in that. And then we will have formal questions which will come through uh, in the uh, sessions, which you can use the Q&A button for in the same way. Uh, please also note that this webinar is being recorded and will be made available online during, uh, on through our Waymaker Hub. So it's clearly been a, a tough year for many of us, uh, businesses and charities alike, and it's good to be coming out of the other side of the second lockdown and hopefully ready for summer. Uh, as with many trails around the world, the pandemic has shone a light on people's access to nature and also the connections between environment, local economy and people's health and well-being. Uh, being in, stuck indoors for half a year has refocused just how much the natural environment, walking and nature means to people and how important it is for their mental and physical health, issues which are at the heart of uh, uh, our charity's mission. The pandemic has also revealed how important the coast path is to tourism and hospitality e economy particularly the all year round market and international visitors. And this shows us how much the hospitality sector is part of the Coast Path experience, give you a warm welcome to visitors, the joys of local provenance, experiences along the trail and a comfortable night's stay after a long day's walk. As a charity, we thought long and hard about what we could do to support businesses along the Coast Path, whilst also ensuring that we could continue to protect and care for it, UK's longest national trail. And that drove us to create the Waymaker programme. At a thousand kilometers long, the Southwest Coast Path is one of the world's great trails, but our geography also means we're the canary in the coal mine when it comes to the impact of climate change with increasing frequency and strength of storms. In the face of these challenging times and during the pandemic, there's been a great collaboration, positivity and resilience. And our challenge is to harness this to help each other on the path to recovery as we face new challenges. I'm now gonna hand you over to our Waymaker team and speakers and let them tell you a bit more about what they've been doing and how we can work together and make the most of our coast path. So over to Genevieve. Hi everyone, I'm Genevieve. I'm the fundraising manager here. Um, I'm gonna spend a few minutes taking you through our vital statistics as a bit of a micro crash course uh, to set the scene for some of those of you who are new to the National Trail and the biodiversity and communities it supports. Uh, it's a bit strange not seeing your faces, but I'm gonna assume you're all nodding and smiling at me encouragingly. Right, so to set the scene, I'll give you a quick introduction to the association and the coast path. To start with, just back to basics, we are the charity that looks after the path. We were founded nearly 50 years ago as a membership organization, um, really by a group of very committed hikers who wanted to see the coast path established as a complete route around the peninsula, giving us all access to the coastline. These guys spent about five years campaigning for this and the trail was eventually finished in 1978, although it took many more years of input from them until the route was as we see it today, hugging the coast, as we all know, as closely as possible. In the last 10 years, we've evolved quite significantly, and that's how most of you have come to know us. Uh, we're now the public face of the trail, and we've become a registered charity fundraising to protect and champion the Southwest Coast Park, responding to the funding gap that was emerging and actually has unfortunately continued to grow. So um, here are some of the key stats to get your uh, taste buds, get your taste buds going. Um, we, um, as you may have heard, we're the longest national trail in the UK at, at 630 miles. We take in four counties of Somerset, Devon, Cornwall and Dorset. Uh, the ascents and the descents of the trail are cumulative, cumulatively equivalent to 
climbing four times the height of Everest. So as you might expect, this makes our trail a playground for elite athletes and adventurers alike. Um, the trail's enormous scale does mean that there's a huge amount of infrastructure along the way. We've got to keep on top of 30,000 steps and 4,000 way markers, uh, just to give you some examples. And that we is us. We're the custodians of the trail. Um, to give you an idea, we're nine staff, of which is about half of us here today. Um, and you're going to meet most of us. Um, and then there's 80 landowners and managers. Uh, so that's people like the National Trust on whose properties the improvement works are coordinated by our lovely National Trail Officer Richard. Uh, we we're lucky to have around 100 volunteers regularly surveying the route for us and then 10,000 members who support us annually, and of course, 300 Waymaker businesses. So there's some of the um, brilliant people who support us. Um, next slide, please. So our trail and wild places in general um, have a significant measurable benefit to our health. I, um, I think this is something that so many more of us have come to realize during the pandemic. Uh, that sweet spot between green and blue really is powerful for our minds and bodies. Um, to prove this, last year we undertook some research with Exeter University into the health benefits of the trail, which found that just by existing, the Southwest Coast Path saves the NHS £75 million each year in preventable ill health and deaths within that community of 9 million people, you probably hear us talk about a lot, who visit the trail each year. And that's actually without even looking at the mental health benefits. So I think we can probably agree, um, we all see when I talk in a minute about what it costs us to care for the coast path that our trail offers pretty amazing return on investment just on the health side of things alone. So um, a little bit more about that as a charity it's our role to help people access those health benefits of the trail especially those groups that wouldn't probably otherwise get to. So um, through our outreach programs uh, last year, for example, we personally worked with over 100, 100 older and isolated people and refugees newly settled to the area um, in, in the Plymouth area to take them on a series of beginner walks in between lockdowns when we were able to. So that's really bringing those health and wellbeing benefits into action. OK, next slide, please. So next up, it's the Southwest Coast Path environment in numbers. There are basically two main things to know about the coast path from an environmental perspective. The first of which is that it's what we call a connector between um, some very important landscapes and seascapes. So we talk about this horizontally, i.e. along the path, and vertically, which is i.e. sort of down from the cliffs, if you imagine, down to uh, where land meets sea. And these form really important habitats, um, and we therefore refer to the path as something called a wildlife corridor. So just to give you some stats around that then, um, pretty impressively, 70% uh, of the path, in fact, over 70% of the path is, in with, is within a national park or a designated area of outstanding natural beauty. There are also tons of other protected areas and reserves, both on the landward and seaward sides of the trail, um, which the trail helps to connect. Um, we've listed some of them there on the slides for you. Um, but one of the best examples of the trail as a successful wildlife corridor are bees. I love this. Um, the coast path is home to a variety of bee species, including some very, very rare kinds. And what's lovely is the bees are able to use the clearing of the trail as a way to travel between their fragmented habitat islands as human um, urban expansion has continued. Their habitats have become fragmented, but they can track the trail as a way to travel between them. And um, this is something called a bee line, which I think is a great name. So uh, the second thing to know about the environment of the Southwest Coast Path is something that Julian touched on at the beginning there. We're actually very much on the front line when it comes to the climate change impacts on the British Isles. Climate change is causing coastal erosion to accelerate because of extreme weather. Uh, this is really a huge threat to the future of the trail, probably the threat to the future of the trail. So we as the association started tracking what we call exceptional coastal erosion events in 2013. And since then, we've recorded over 180 incidents, um, including, for example, that dramatic recent episode at Seatown in Dorset, which you probably all saw coverage of just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so, yes, that's that's one of the biggest threats to to the environment of the Southwest Coast Path. Uh, next slide, please. 
So I'm just going to touch really briefly on economics of the coast path. It's the reason we're all here today. It, the Southwest Coast Path is absolutely intrinsically linked to our region tourism economy. Its continued existence and it, the preservation of its quality has a direct impact on local livelihoods. Uh, the figures you're seeing on the screen, I think, probably need very little explanation as they speak for themselves. The Coast Path brings £520 million into the local economy by attracting those 9 million visitors to the region every year probably making it the most popular attraction in the region and therefore it supports the equivalent of around 10,000 jobs in tourism and those that supply to tourism. So pretty impressive um, for our humble little trail. Uh, so next slide please. Okay finally I'm just going to tell you a few key numbers, need to know numbers uh, related to caring for the coast path um, because that's where we really come in as a charity. So thanks to rising costs associated with coastal erosion, it's now costing us on average £1,400 per mile each year to keep the 630 miles open and cared for of the South West Coast Path. Um, roughly half of that we've got to raise as a charity and roughly half of that comes from our Natural England grant from the government. Uh, things can fluctuate year to year, but across a five year average, that is about where it lands. Um, now of those 9 million people that we keep talking about, less than 1% um, actually give back to the path. And most have no idea at all that there's a charity behind the National Trail. I certainly didn't before I came to work here. Um, some of you guys uh, might not have known before. So really those individuals, businesses and grant makers that do support us, therefore have a real impact on our ability to continue our work. Um, we're really grateful to fundraisers who set themselves crazy challenges on the trail for the trail, like the lovely Luke Pitchard. Um, our donors, our members, and of course, our business supporters at all levels, um, like the Waymakers that many of you are here. So, um, yeah, that's your sort of super short crash course in the National Trail and Association complete. I don't know if we've got any questions. Hello, everyone. I'm Becky. I'm, I'm looking after the chat today. So um, we haven't got any formal questions um, in the Q&A section. If you do have any questions, please do post them there. Um, we'll be having an opportunity after each presentation um, to ask any questions. Um, but yeah, it's very exciting to see all the chat uh, going on. Nice to see that we've got some people who have completed the trail, others who are oh, working brilliant. towards it, and others who have just walked a bit like me, the same section lots and lots of times, and have probably made up the 630 miles um, that way. Uh, so yeah, we can move on, please. Uh, so we're going to be passing over to Nell Barrington, who's going to be talking about why our national trail is good for business. Hey, thanks, Becky. Um, as I say, my name is Nell and I've been walking and eating my way along the southwest coast path for the last couple of years. And I've done 487 miles so far and have loved every single step of it. I've also been working with hundreds of tourism businesses along the trail to find out from them what are the benefits of promoting this trail and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. So walking is extremely high profile so if we could go on to the next slide please. Um, it's in the news and so it makes absolute business sense um, for us to be promoting it um, with our business. I had a quick look through the papers just um, yesterday and um, it features South, the Southwest Coast Path is featuring in the Sunday Times, Country Farm magazine, the Ramblers top six stunning trails to walk as well as in the local press and on the TV um, we've seen um, um, Kate Humble who you can see here, Julia Bradbury, Simon Reeves all talking about how great it is to be outdoors in the southwest of England. And it appears to me, I don't know whether this is right, but I think walking is soon going to be overtaking cooking on television as um, the thing to be doing. So if you feature the Southwest Coast Path in your marketing and you are offering walkers a really warm welcome, you have a great opportunity to take advantage of this celebrity endorsement. So I'd thoroughly recommend you to do that. I did a Google search yesterday and found that there were over 100 million searches for the Coast Path and over 200 million for national trails. So it really is of interest right now. So what can you do? Well, you can sign up to the National Trails website. It's free. You get um, a place on the map, you list your business, and you can also download their toolkit, which has got loads and loads of great information in there um, about how to promote your business to walkers. And the Southwest Coast Path Association are going to be taking over control of this at the end of April. And they're going to be highlighting waymakers in that, but more from Sarah about that later. So if we could go on to the next slide, please. Um, 
the number of people walking for leisure is increasing. Um, it's been increasing year on year. And you can see lots of charts here that are um, Google um, search word trends. And Google is a blue line over the last five years. So you can see national trails on the left and Southwest Coast Path on the right. And you can see it goes up and down, but over time, there's a lot of interest. Um, interestingly, the pink boxes that you can see on the screen are interest over the last year. And you can see that interest is really high. And I think for tourism businesses, um, if you look at the red line, that's how people are viewing on mobile devices. And the yellow line is on desktop. So I think that's also very, very interesting. Um, Mintel reported that nearly a quarter of 16 to 24 year olds are new ramblers this year, which is up on 16% in 2019. And Strava, many of you may use, is an outdoor activity app. And they've said that outdoor um, walks have increased by a third in 2020. So it really, really is big business. And Mori have reported that 40% 40, 40 of us say we're going to be walking more um, since lockdown. But whether this is turns into a reality or not, we don't know once we're all free to roam. Um, another trend which you all are probably um, very well aware of are that um, dogs in lockdown. And so if we can become dog friendly businesses, 79% um, of, of us are likely to take our dog on holiday. So great opportunity for you there. Southwest, as you can see here, um, Visit England has been monitoring where people are going to go on holiday this summer, and 27% of us say we're going to go to the Southwest, and a third of them are going to be staying in coastal um, resorts and the countryside. So the Southwest is really, really going to be seeing a surge in the staycation. So we're all based in the Southwest. So for tourism businesses, this is great news. So if you're walker friendly and close to the path, there are growing numbers of visitors that are just waiting to get out there and also new markets to tap into too. So we're going to the next slide. Um, walking has been viewed in a different way since lockdown. Not only is it seen as a great way to get outside, but as we've been hearing, it's good for our health and people are really, really interested in that now. So as tourism businesses, we need to be promoting um, the health benefits such as local food and drink. Um, I like this picture I took, life-changing coffee, how cool is that? Um, more and more people are taking an interest in nature and the great outdoors. And so that's the things that we need to be promoting in our marketing about the Southwest Coast Path. Um, we all know about the benefits of exercise. Um, I found out so, so much when I was researching for this presentation that walking can improve our cognitive function, memory, attention, mood, and it reduces anxiety and fatigue. So who wouldn't want to be walking? Um, nature, as I say, is now very much front of mind for us all. And um, charities such as the RSPB have seen massive spikes in traffic. Um, since lockdown. But what we don't know is if these changes will be temporary or whether they'll carry on um, in our new way of life. Uh, prior to this uh, lockdown, Southwest Coast Path carried out a survey and it found that 83% of us felt more connected to nature when we were on the coast path. So it's really, really important to be promoting nature, the environment, and health and well being in our marketing. So if we go on to the next slide, um, another tourism trend is that people are not just looking for um, adventure and experiences, they're looking for once in a lifetime experiences. And the Coast Path certainly offers this. So we could just play this clip a minute. It's very short. Yep, I reckon these might be some of the highest cliffs in Cornwall. It's a long way down. I'm scared of heights, so walking the coast path for me is, uh, is a challenge at the best of times. But the, my point I wanted to make here is that people want the, to have these um, adventures, they want to have these experiences. So if you can offer adventures for walkers and also non-walkers, um, and if you can base them on what people have been doing during lockdown. So if we can, adventures that are coming across as really, really popular are those connected with food and drink, um, bushcraft. The key thing is that they are unique, authentic because people want to live like a local. They want to experience what the locals do. Um, so my advice to you would be to get, get out there and create those once in a lifetime experiences, because again, research has found they make us feel good. So if we could go on to the next slide, please. Um, 
as a tourism business, everyone wants to extend their season so we can increase our income. And so how can we do this? Um, we know that there is a growth in out of season breaks. We know 55% of people will walk the coast path year round. Um, so what we've got to do is make sure that we are offering something for them year round. Are we shouting about where the wildlife is in certain parts of um, certain parts of the year? Are we promoting spring breaks? Um, kind of fireside as long as we can always come back to an open fire after we've got soaking wet after a lovely walk then that's always something to be promoting as well another way of extending a season is to um, hold events and um, the national trails website has got a section on there on how to organize events um, on national trails too so that might be something you want to look at and also when we all open up again to the real world targeting the international market is uh, a, a good thing to attract um, people out of season because they're not so reliant on holidays or weekends they book earlier they stay longer and they generally spend more so that will all be something that hopefully we can will open up soon so if we can go on to the next one as well the next slide please um, walkers don't just walk you can see a collection of images here um, mainly of uh, my dog doing various activities um, we go to attractions we go on boats we go to delis we eat sandwiches um, we drink coffee we spend our money all along the southwest coast path and we know that walkers will do that so what we just need to make sure is give give reasons give walkers a reason to spend their money with your business. Um, make sure that you are welcoming them in with your signage, with your marketing, um, and give them opportunities to visit you um, by offering facilities for walkers, such as refilling bottles and so on. So I think to, to sum up for me, walking the coast path, um, if we go on to the, the next slide, walking the coast path can engage all the senses, and it really, really does do that. Um, for visitors and once we engage all the senses then we create memorable moments in time and the more memorable the moment is the more likely that person that visitor to your business is going to go away and shout about how great you are so what I would say to you is to go onto these two websites um, as soon as you can and if you haven't already signed up sign up for the uh, national trails and also the Waymaker scheme and then start shouting everywhere about your proximity to the coast path giving people a reason to choose your business and then you will find out how great the trail is for your business thank you very much Brilliant. Thank you, Nell. Lots of amazing um, ideas there and um, making me want to get out on the path. <laughs> um, we are just going to take a question that's come in from Chris Bolton. I'm going to um, field this one to Genevieve, who's our fundraising manager. Um, Chris asks, what has the trend been for um, donations over time from trail users? OK, great. Thanks for that one. Um, I'm happy to report that steadily over the years, we have seen a real increase in supporters. Um, when we were preparing for this presentation, I was looking back at, for example, at some of our membership figures and the growth from 5,000 to 10,000 members has been sort of slow and steady over the last sort of five to 10 years. But we have started to see um, a real increase. And actually, I would say anecdotally anyway, over the last year, something that we were talking about as colleagues a lot is that real change in attitudes that the pandemic seems to have brought about and you know people getting out enjoying the trail does seem to be translating into um, a willingness to, to give and, and support the charity more so than before which is absolutely brilliant um, we're probably starting to achieve some cut through maybe people who didn't know we were there before now have found us um, you guys might have seen in the press just in the last couple of weeks that our big public fundraiser at the moment is called Every Mile Matters. Um, we're just about to click into our second year of that. But the first year was aiming to raise 100,000, which we did. We're very happy to report. And, and we, we actually exceeded that target slightly. And when you break down the figures for the people that donated to that, it's actually quite amazing how many people on the higher end of the scale even are people that were totally new to the charity. So not only were they finding us for the first time, they were going straight in with making really significantly generous gifts. So, um, yeah, hopefully um, it's maybe too early to say, you know, that it's going like that. But I'm hoping that um, over the next year or two that some of these trends will continue. So thank you for that question. 
That's great. Thank you, Jen. Um, so I think that was all the questions for the moment. If you do have any more questions, feel free to pop them in the chat there. Um, sorry, in the Q&A section. Um, also, lots of interesting stuff happening in the chat. Um, I just noticed that actually, I think as uh, Vivian said, she's going to be working with some small groups visiting, uh, walking South West Coast Path to take lots of photos, which is a great idea. Um, and people talking about our lovely Zoom backgrounds. Uh, I'm coming uh, from Woolacoom today. So uh, it's, uh, it's a nice way of brightening up your day. And uh, we do have lots of uh, photos available um, to share with people who support the charity. So you can always uh, update your Zoom background to look like this. Um, so next, we're going to move on to our next speaker. Uh, we've got Russ Peak, who's um, coming in from Western Discovery. So um, can I pass over to you? Hello everybody, my name is Russ Peake, I'm from Western Discoveries Walking Holidays and I'm going to give you some insights into our experience on working with walkers, so what they're looking for, how to get them and how generally how good they are to work with. So if we could change slides please. So Western Discoveries is a small family run business, we're based in the far west of Cornwall, just above Penzance. And for the last 12 years, we've been providing self-led walking holidays around 170 miles of the westernmost Cornish coast path. So that's from Padstow up on the north coast, around to Falmouth on the south coast. Our business provides walking holidays for people who are looking for a helping hand with those tricky logistics. So we develop itineraries. We line up accommodations around the coast. We do that with approximately 90 local businesses, provide luggage transfers, arrival, departure transfers, maps, route notes, etc., just to allow people to make the most of their time on the southwest coast path. So our season runs from Easter until the end of October. It peaks really from mid-May right the way through to mid-September. And we have 250 bookings a year which translates to 750 people out walking the coast path. We find a lot of our walkers like to book nice and early. So they're booking three to six months in advance. Of course, we get surges of uh, an interest in the run up to the large holidays as people think, right, what am I gonna do now? Okay, next slide, please. So who are these mysterious walkers? The first thing to take on board is there's no such thing as a typical walker. They come in all shapes, sizes, nationalities. They have different walking abilities and they often have different interests that they want to combine with their walks. So for some, it may be the scenery. They may be foodies. We have people wanting to enjoy the peace and quiet of the coast path. And we have others who are looking to socialize. But I would say the the one thing that they all have in common is a real appreciation of the natural environment. And they're also very aware of the physical and mental health benefits that walking can bring them. Um, so that really ties in with what Nell was just saying. Now, COVID has had a massive impact on our business, like so many other businesses. And we've noticed quite a change in the groups that we have coming to walk the coast path. So pre-COVID, by far and away, the biggest age group interested in walking holidays was the over 55s. And that was a very international market. We found they're often looking for a certain level of challenge and a certain level of comfort. Um, they're often happy to pay a little bit more so they want mid to high range accommodation they want good food good drink and good service is also very important for this group um, we also find they often came as came as couples um, and one of the the bonuses of this group is their preference to book out of peak season so 45 percent of our over 55s would choose to walk out of peak season now, we've also noticed uh, a swing in where our customers come from. So five years ago, 75% of our bookings were from Germany, Switzerland and the Netherlands. And then as Brexit loomed on the horizon, that group began to fade and it was replaced pretty much by the North American market. So 2018, 
2019, a quarter of our bookings were coming from the US and Canada. And that went hand in hand with an increase in domestic tourism. And we suppose that's due to this, this prominence of walking and the Southwest as a region in the media and that Neville was talking about. Now, couples walking as a pair, walking the coast path is an incredible experience. And a lot of our walkers want to share that experience. So 70% of our pre-COVID bookings were couples and the majority of the remainder was made up by pairs of friends. We do have a few solo walkers, we do have a few groups, but it's primarily couples and pairs. If we could go on to the next slide, please. Okay, and then came COVID. So the obvious and most significant change was the disappearance of the international market. Last year, our bookings were 99% domestic and there's very little change for this year. However, we are seeing some very early interest from international customers for 2022. So hopefully this is a good sign of things to come. Now, you, you've probably heard about larger group sizes visiting the Southwest, um, particularly last year, large family groups, large groups of friends. This wasn't something that we saw replicated in our walkers. Last year and this year has been very much a continuation of the couples and the pairs that we saw pre-COVID. Um, but one change we did notice was an increase in the number of bookings coming from people in their 30s and 40s. So this is a, a younger group than our traditional market. Generalizing, a lot of them tend to be city-based couples, often visiting the region for the first time. And these guys, they're looking to embrace everything that the region has to offer. So it might be surfing, it might be kayaking, it might be good food, it's outdoor pursuits in general. Um, and we found this, this to be a, a lovely group to work with. Um, they're very appreciative of what they're doing and they're generally excited to be doing something new in somewhere new. And um, quite interesting, this is a group that seems to have expressed a, a certain interest in sustainable tourism, tourism and responsible tourism. So hopefully this is another positive sign for the future. Um, if we can move slides, please. So what do they want? Most walkers and most tour operators prefer to use B&Bs, hotels and inns rather than self-catering accommodation. And a lot of the stays are single night stays. Now, I know this is a, a double-edged sword for accommodation providers. These single night stays can mean more change, they do mean more changeovers, and they can create awkward calendar gaps. But at the same time, they can fill awkward calendar gaps. And with over 8 million visitors to the Coast Path annually, there's certainly the, the volume to compensate for those difficulties. Now, COVID accredit accreditation is important. It gives people that peace of mind. Um, we don't have a preference for any particular scheme. Ease of booking is always very important, um, but the, uh, perhaps the vital thing is access from the coast path. At the end of a long day walking, these, these walkers may have done six, seven hours out on the coast path. The last thing they want is another 40 minute walk inland to their accommodation. So they're looking for accommodation right on the coast or for places that are willing to provide pickups and drop offs to the coast path. Price and experience, increasingly our customers are looking for mid-range accommodation. So it's not hostels, it's not the cheap and cheerful anymore. They're looking for somewhere nice with a little more luxury and comfort sprinkled throughout the holiday, particularly at the end of their holidays. And again, reviews, like for everything nowadays, they're very important. It provides that peace of mind. So one, important thing to remember is that whilst for many of us this is our work for our customers it can be the highlight of their year and it's not just the beauty of the coast path that makes their time in the southwest so special it's the whole experience 
It's the accommodation, the food, the drink, the people they meet. And we found this memorable experience to be very attractive to this new group of their customers in their 30s and 40s. And it's something they're actively seeking prior to booking now. So our response has been to celebrate the more emotive side of the coast path. And we found the best way to do this is through video. And I'm just gonna show you a promotional video that we try to do that with. Thank you. If we'd go on to the next slide, please. So what do the walkers want from you, from us as a business? They want that mem memorable experience. They, they want something that's going to stay with them for a long time. Uh, but increasingly, they're looking for a little bit more. They are wanting to stay with people and with businesses that share their values and their interests. So that can be walking, it can be an intimate knowledge of the area, it can be a love of the region, and it can also be businesses that are supporting sustainability and are supporting the coast path itself. Um, so we really embrace the Southwest Coast Path, we support it as much as we can, and hopefully you guys will too. Thank you. Thank you, Ras. That was really great. And I think we all loved that video. That was absolutely amazing. Um, so we haven't got any questions in the Q&A for you, but um, I've been keeping an eye on, on the chat. Um, interesting to see that people are talking about potentially working together, you know, where you've got different surface, service providers and people are interested in offering, you know, the walking element that they don't offer. Um, so it might be that there's uh, some conversations that happen at, at the end of this, um, which would be lovely. Um, I'm actually going to now introduce myself uh, because I'm, uh, I'm presenting next on social media. So if you can move on to the next slide for me. Uh, so I'm going to just give you a little whistle stop tour um, of how to create a destination. So it's about using particularly Instagram as a way to uh, grow your business. So next slide, please. And we all know, um, we've all known for a while, social media is really important when it comes to marketing our business but it's even more important uh, now that we've all had such a troublesome year and we want to come um, at it with a low cost, high impact approach. So um, the best thing about social media is it's free to get started. You can start an account, you can start posting and you can start talking to your customers in new ways. It's a great way to not only be broadcasting but also to engage so it is a two-way conversation a uh, great way for you to learn about your customers and what they want and also tell them about everything that you're up to so you can go to the next slide please um, now i'm going to choose instagram because it's one that is really really fast growing for us um, just in the past few years i think we have we've gained about twenty five thousand followers in just two or three years um, so it really is growing very, very fast. Um, looking across the whole platform, you've got 25 million business profiles on there. I'm sure lots of you um, as a sort of customer consumer yourself uh, use uh, Instagram as a way of finding where to go and what to do. 90% um, of um, people who use Instagram actually follow businesses. So it is really important um, as a way of connecting customers to the brands that they like, the places that they like to visit and 80% of us uh, actually make a purchase uh, based on something that we've seen. 
So we know that this really is a very powerful platform and it's one that is also very visual, very fun and places like the Southwest Coast Path, we all know, is absolutely beautiful and comes across so well in pictures. So thinking about how you can link not just your business, but link your business to the trail and the whole experience when it comes to social media is really important. And it's what's gonna give you that unique ability to, to build a customer base to come with you uh, on that platform. So if you can go to the next slide, please. So social media really is about getting to know you. So, you know, we're talking about a social element. So despite the fact that we are actually uh, marketing, you know, it's business marketing, that social part of it is still really important. It's all about your customers being able to get to know the people behind the business. Um, and the reason why people tend to choose smaller businesses, um, they, you know, they want to go and stay at a cottage or a B&B, or they want to walk with a local guide, etc., is because um, small book businesses offer this lovely, unique and personalised um, experience, this unique character. There's it's the kind of experience you will only get at that one place and that's what's really important so when you are uh, thinking about your social media strategy you want to be seeing it as an extension of your brand your personality and the way you talk because people they, they get familiar with how how you talk and who you are and they come to expect certain things from you um, and there's lots of fun ways that we can have a go at doing that so we we'll move on to the next slide please here are a few examples. So uh, this is the porthole in Woolacoon, a uh, beautiful restaurant that actually looks out over across the dunes. I mean, not far, it's probably about there in my picture. Um, and what's really nice you can see here is that they're not just posting amazing, perfect product photos. You know, we're seeing the real essence behind this business. So you have updates of when it's getting built, building some excitement that there's something new coming, there's something to look out for. Then you've got a, a post welcoming two new team members. So right from the very beginning, you know who these people are and um, people, you know, customers who have eaten uh, in the restaurant will, will sort of familiarize themselves with the people. They might even come into the um, business and then and see people that they have uh, been following on social. We've also got a lovely one, just, you know, somebody having a coffee out and about. So very nearby to the business. So again, that's the idea of bringing the, the whole experience into it. Um, and also obviously selling what you actually do. So some amazing, um, obviously takeaway, I think, because it's <laughs> because of a uh, lockdown, but some amazing food shots, which just makes you want to go there and eat. Uh, next slide, please. Another one which I absolutely love, so Mongo Lils, which is, um, if you've ever seen her, she's down on the lizard um, with the most incredible views. It's sort of the place to have an Instagram account because she's got so much around her that's going to make it look absolutely stunning. But again, what's really nice is you're seeing the people behind these businesses. So you've got, um, you've got working on some products uh, that they're going to be selling soon, doing a little update, getting some excite excitement about it. Um, these are actually the top two posts with both videos. The one on the top right is the guy having a really fun dance around whilst uh, with some music on whilst he's painting. So again, that idea of, you know, you're getting ready for uh, the next season, giving things a lick of paint or you're adding, you know, you're, you're making over one of the bedrooms or you're adding a new place to eat outside or something like that. It's important to tell your customers about what you're up to and make sure that they, they know what's changing at all times. And then obviously a lovely product shot there uh, looking out uh, on the coast path, which is beautiful. Uh, next slide, please. So to keep it nice and simple, I'm going to go for um, a, a Think Coast, which hopefully you can remember. Um, so C is create an account. It's super easy, take no time at all. And um, what you want to do is create an account with as short and as relevant a uh, handle as possible. And then that handle, once you've got it, you want to tell everyone what it is. So you want to have it on your website, you want to have it maybe up at reception or um, on little cards um, on, on your sort of dining tables or you know hand it on business cards things like that so that people know how to get in touch with you um o is for open up your world so it's really about giving customers that inside of view of your business you know kind of that like peeking behind the scenes um, because that's what people like they don't want just this glossy perfect view of things they want to really know the true business 
Um, a is for ask your customers to follow you and to share their experiences. So you kind of don't get without asking, you know, how you do have to put a bit of effort in, but after, after you've engaged with customers, whether it's on email, whether it's on social media itself, or whether it's in person, you know, ask people to follow you. Say, oh, we'd love to, you know, we'd love you to um, follow what we're up to and ask them to also uh, maybe post some pictures that they've um, had whilst staying with you or, or, um, or eating with you or whatever, as it all is lovely collateral for you to use and promote and get more customers to come your way. S is for share regular posts so that you can build up an account. You know, social is fast moving. You do need to think about posting quite a few things, um, but you know, start off slow, once a week or something like that. It's not a huge effort, but it will, you know, will translate into, into sales, which is great. Um, and then T is think beyond your business. So share photos that showcase the whole experience. So people don't just want to see where they're gonna sit and eat or where they're gonna stay that night. They also wanna know what's the most amazing walk that's only five, 10 minutes away to get to. What's the best secluded beach that's nearby? Um, you know, those kinds of things. And here's a lovely example from Cornish TP Holidays. You can see there that they They've got some lovely ones of their actual business. That's their lake, which you can go and um, you know, paddleboard or, or whatever on. You've got your teepees, but then you've also got nearby beaches and um, walks, which really sells the whole experience and just makes you want to go there. Next slide, please. And what's really, really important to think about here is user generated content. Now, 86% of people say that they um, become interested in a specific lake location after seeing it on um, social media. So that's, I mean, speaks for itself, as does 60% of them said that user generated content is the most influential. So they're more likely to go somewhere after they see a friend or an influencer, or even just, you know, another person who's posted an amazing picture. It almost has more value than when you say it yourself, because you've got a vested interest. But, um, you know, it's important to have both of those things running. 89% uh, of people said they would post um, about a positive travel ex experience. So again, it's about getting your customers to do a bit of the work for you. Um, and people love to share about their um, holidays and, and travel experiences and, you know, helping them get to the spots where they can get those amazing photos is going to help as well. So next slide. Here are a few examples that I, I found just doing a, a quick search on Instagram. Lovely ones of people in their big, beautiful, comfy bed, going out and getting ice cream, you know, stopping and having a lovely cocktail, um, things like that. And even, even this one with the, with the Port Isaac mug, you know, having things in, if you've got a self-catering accommodation or, or something like that, you know, thinking about what you actually put in the place in terms of how people are then going to promote you. Having location and, and sort of local provenance is really important. It's something that we as an organization really promote, uh, trying to share people, um, put people in touch so that they can uh, provide local food and drink and things like that so that um, it all helps to generate this whole experience. Next slide, please. So as you can see, I've tried to keep it really easy. So it's think coast and then think path. So path is provide great customer service by responding to inquiries. Lots and lots of people now go to either Facebook or Twitter or Instagram to ask businesses questions. When you open, can I bring my dog? Um, have you got walks nearby? You know, all of these kind of questions, you have to sort of be on it and providing a really good experience right at the very beginning means that at the very end, once they've had that stay with you, they're a lot more likely to post an amazing um, experience review or post for you. A, again, it's ask your customers to post for you. So really think about um, those moments where you can, you, you can prompt them really to, uh, to post that really, really valuable user-generated content that I mentioned. T is try offering an incentive to post. So if you want to kind of boost this, you can either create your own hashtag, uh, which you put alongside your handle. So it makes it easier for you to follow these posts. You might want to do a giveaway. So that encourages people a discount or even um, creating a little photo spot. So some places have the place, you know, they, they put a little bit of effort into a place where they know is going to have 
anyone who wants to get that amazing selfie and then you know a bit of your branding in the background it can be a fun little creative project and can lead to creating an actual spot which people are really looking for to go to and then h is help other businesses in your area by promoting them too like i said this is about a whole experience so yes you want to talk about all the nearby walks and things like that but also you know tell people where they can go and get the best coffee tell people where you can stop and have an amazing breakfast um so whatever you don't offer make sure you're promoting your favorite places and you know support your fellow businesses it's really important um and that's the whole ethos behind uh waymakers which um, sarah will be talking about later so next slide, I think we're on to questions. Um, and Genevieve, I think you've been looking after the chat for me. Have we got any questions or? Hi there. Yeah, oh, actually there's no direct questions um, about this uh, presentation. So I think we're actually good to move on to the next one. Thanks very much, Becky. Lovely, thank you so much. So um, I'm going to pass you over to Sarah. Um, so Sarah is going to be talking about our Waymaker program in a bit more detail um, about connecting and collaborating. Okay. Uh, hi everyone, I think I've spoken to some of you on the phone and it's lovely for you all to come along today. Thank you very much for supporting us and, and coming along. Uh, thanks for that uh, masterclass on social media, Becky. That's really good. And it just shows how important photos and social media reach are. Um, as um, And these are just two resources which we'll be able to offer you from our new Waymaker package. Um, but before we go into the detail of that, I just wanted to give you a quick run through on how Waymakers came about and why it came about. So in 2019, we set up a focus group um, with some of our Waymakers. And I think Mike was there and Joe from Sidmouth Hotels with Alistair Handyside in his kitchen uh, because we wanted to re-gig, uh, re-gig, re-jig our business membership uh, to make it more appealing to the businesses on the path and to meet their needs to help us generate uh, more income to look after the path and to make it less transactional and less expensive. Um, if any of you were business members with this, you'll remember that our large business membership was 330 pounds and that's, that was probably too much um, to sustain um, for some of the smaller businesses. So uh, what the group suggested, the focus group suggested was um, just make, a flat cost, affordable flat cost for everybody, open up to all businesses on the Southwest Coast Path who are all part of the great Southwest Coast Path experience, like the food and drinks, the experiences, the accommodations, and make it affordable to them. And then do a package of opt in benefits so that if you've got a bit more money and you might want to do a bit of advertising with us or a bit of have some more guidebooks or whatever, you could do that. So we listened to the focus group and we thought, okay, take that away. I went away and I thought, that's really good. We can do that. Yeah, but how do we also get our charity message across and encourage businesses to help us look after the path as well, which is really important to their customers and to their business? How could we work more in partnership? Now, this was very fortunate. Um, I went along to the Southwest Tourism Awards and they had a great motivational speaker there called Jeff Ram. I don't know if any of you have ever seen him. He's fantastic. And unfortunately, I got locked outside the conference with him. We were having a breath of fresh air. And I thought, oh, here's my chance. I'll ask him. I said, how am I going to get my charity message across and meet the needs of business so that we can all look after the path together? And he said, why don't you make a video where the path shuts down and is destroyed, falls into the sea, and ask businesses what would happen to their business without the path? And I thought, wow, well, that's brilliant. That's really powerful. And then, of course, we didn't want it to happen like this, but COVID came along. And that is what happened. Um, and it gave us and everybody um, an opportunity to look at a new way of working, which combined the focus group's ideas and Jeff's ideas for businesses. And to help us create um, a package for businesses um, which combined all these things and the new sort of ethos and um, sort of way of thinking that um, Russ was telling us about and Nell was telling us about that has come about um, as, as a result of COVID. So we were looking to do a package which reduced costs for businesses, supported uh, local businesses and local people because that became a really, really important thing during lockdown, particularly on the coast path, you know, people dropping in for local coffees and things 
uh, a package which tapped into the new love of walking in nature and the health benefits that people knew, um, you know, were coming from the path, which tapped into the new respect for the environment, um, which helped us as a charity to share these great benefits of the path with as many people as possible, and which worked in the spirit of collaboration, which I know this is how so many of the tourism businesses through lockdown and through COVID have got through, that we've worked together and how we could work in the spirit of collaboration, supporting businesses, whilst also supporting the path and um, sharing it with as many people as possible. And so really, this is how our Waymaker ethos is born. So if you just um, go on to the next slide, please, Simon. So this is just a summary of what, um, you know, how important the path really is to the tourism industry, nine million visitors, 520 into the local economy, which then spills out into our local suppliers and producers and creates, um, um, well, helps to support 10,000 jobs, all with the Southwest Coast Path in the middle of it, which we as a charity need to protect, care for and share. Um, so that's really what our Waymaker ethos is about. I thought we're gonna champion and celebrate local businesses, local producers, local providers, and the local people, which is you, uh, which um, create the great, great Southwest Coast Path experience. We want to work with you to share information so that as many people as possible can um, experience the Southwest Coast Path and, and share in its benefits. And that's all about our, as a charity, our equity of access for people. So helping us to share information is very important. We needed to raise funds to protect, care for and share the path, as Genevieve said, 1,400 thousand four hundred pounds for every mile of it and we want to collaborate so we can all take collective responsibility for this massive environmental and economic asset which we're so lucky to have in our region so um yeah so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you a quick run through of the waymaker packages that having told you you know why we created waymakers and what it's about um so the way you make patches are for everybody, every business along the path, a sleep, eat and drink or experience, whatever you offer. And we reduced the standard packages right down to 25 pounds. So for just 25 pounds, you can sign up with web entry on our website. And I'll show you an example of that. For 50 into our web and guide and for 80 pounds as an extra mile, um, you know, um, supporter, you get a little bit more from us, but you're also giving a bit more back to the path. We've created a free friend package, which is for budget accommodation, uh, offering um, places to stay for under 18 pounds a night. And that's for our bobbies, campsites, things like that. I don't know if any of you saw the picture recently in the Dorset Echo, where wild campers were nearly falling into the sea. And as part of our role as a charity, we want to make sure people of all sorts of walkers have all sorts of places to stay from the high end to low end, uh, because if we have wild camping, that's going to impact on the path. We've all seen the rubbish and litter around, so th that's very important for us. Um, our free friend package always support, also supports charities and uh, trusts along the path. So that's places like uh, museums, like I think we've got Fourth Kerno PK here today, um, and a free package for our information providers, like the tourist information um, centres. Um, because they're so important again in sharing the benefits of the path with everybody else. We have a special uh, package for our multi businesses, which is our holiday produce providers, um, our holiday parks, anybody with quite a lot of units, our big hotels. And uh, what we're doing with that, we've noticed rising group bookings. So we're going to be creating a special element as, as well on our group booking page for those people. Um, obviously, we work with walking holiday um, companies and one of our biggest supporters is uh, baggage transfers. Um, we give them prominence on the site because when people come to us, they start their Southwest Coast Path journey with us and they want all as much information as possible about how they're going to carry out their journey, whether that's self-guided, whether it's, you know, just sort of having a circular walk or, or whether it's um, booking a walking holiday. So <clears throat> we do a package for them. And to share out the economic benefits of the path, we do want the suppliers and producers as well. Um, and we're just tweaking that because we've noticed that a lot of suppliers, which originally were business to business, have now become business to consumer. 
and they've effectively, you know, become supplying um, consumers online as a result of lockdown. So we're looking at ways that we can integrate this package with our own shop and provide you a platform to reach our members and people who love the path and local provenance um, around the coast path. Um, and then we've got a range of additional benefits which we can unlock to you as Waymakers, which is our advertising and things like that. So I'm just going to um, go through now and show you examples of, of the resources that we have that we can use to share with you as businesses, which will be useful to you. We have uh, 1 million website visitors. We have 600 walks on our um, website, and I'll show you how we link you to that as a business. Uh, people want to know where to walk. It, it's a great resource and a great tool. And uh, we produce our complete guide to the Southwest Coast Path, which has a readership of 12 and a half thousand. That goes to all our members. And some people love a good old fashioned, you know, guide like this. I've got a copy here that they can flip through as they're walking. So we'll give you an entry in that. Um, we allow you to make direct offers to our 10,000 Southwest Coast Path members. So you've got a, a, a market there that loves the Coast Path. They love what we do. So, and you can target them directly through us. We have a photo library with 3,000 images on. We've been talking about the importance of photos and using it for Instagram and video, uh, you know, backdrops and things like that. We give you access to them. Um, we have 65,000 social media followers, and I'll, I'll tell you how you can use them to your benefit as well. And we have all the National Trails resources. We've just created two major new itineraries with them. Um, and as I said, we're going to be taking control of the Southwest Coast Path version of that from the end of this month. So that's a great resource as well. And also, as a business, one of the other resources we can connect you with is you can become associated with a world leading brand. Um, which is the Southwest Coast Path that is an internationally renowned trail. And um, in being connected with us, you can also show your ethical credentials um, in supporting a charity, an environmental cause, a sustainable cause, um, which is becoming very important to people. So that, that's the resources we want to share with you. And I'll just show you in detail how that works. So um, on your website entry as a business, um, you are linked to all walks within a five mile radius of you. So that when people search by walks, you will come up as either asleep, eat and drink or do. And then there's a direct link to your own website for direct booking. Um, so have the next slide, please, Simon. Uh, yeah. So then also when people go to our, our finder, you will come up linked within a five mile radius of um, where they search. And all those, um, you know, either sleep, eat and drink or do will drop down there and people can again go directly to your website. Next slide, please. Uh, there's the guide, which we've just talked about, which you get an entry in. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this is the National Trails website with our two new itineraries on, which we, we're featuring our Waymakers on. Next slide, please. So that, that was a run through of the sort of benefits we give you as a Waymaker. These are the additional benefits, which if you choose to opt into, uh, you can. These are paid for benefits. So you can take your normal 25 or 50 uh, or 80 um, upfront payment, and that releases and unlocks these benefits for you. And if you think about those costs, you really have to get one booking from our website um, to, to cover them. So, yeah, we hope that's good value. So I'll just show you a little bit about our trailblazing advertising. Um, next slide, please, Simon. So our trailblazing mag, I've got a copy here, is our member magazine with a circulation of 12 and a half thousand. And we opened that up for Waymaker advertising the first time that the new ones just come out. And you can advertise in that for as little as 80 pounds. Um, and again, going directly to a very interested target um, audience. And I think we have some bigger advertisers this time like uh, Original Cottages and stuff as well. So next slide, please, Simon. Uh, We've recently opened up um, our online advertising where you can um, take some advertising which is area specific to you. So as part of our Every Mile Matters campaign, we've created lots of different explore places where people um, support the path by area. So like, for instance, we have Fourth Glade is supporting our North Devon page. But our smaller waymakers um, can advertise down in the right hand column. Um, so can I just... Next page, please, Simon. So I can show you here. Um, uh, 
Wythra running tours in Cornwall, they decided to take some online advertising on our trail running page. Um, so for just £20 a month, they're highlighted on our trail running page. And then here's an example down the bottom of that slide of one of our um, area specific pages like North Devon, where a similar type of online advertising is available. Um, so next slide, please, Simon. So there's more ways to connect with us. So we've just been talking about uh, Instagram um, and how important it is. We've realized that uh, we have a great, you know, following on Facebook and Instagram, but it's very much about us as a charity. And we know as Waymakers that you want to connect directly with our customer base and tell them more about your business. So we are in the process of setting up a new Waymaker Instagram page that we can share your business information on uh, with a consumer focused market. So what we'll do is if you use the hashtag uh, SWCP Waymaker, we'll find your stories and then we can share them onto our new Instagram page. Um, alternatively, you can react, uh, interact with us in our Waymaker Facebook group page, a private group and share your stories and we'll put them um, onto uh, the new Instagram page. Um, the other way to do it, um, so that would be your own stories, but we will also have a calendar of, um, you know, celebrating national days like National Fish and Chip Day, you know, Nas National Pasty Week, um, National World Day, uh, World Ocean Day, things like that, and give you a calendar so that we will tell you when we're doing things that are relevant to your business that you might like to share on our um, consumer focused Instagram page. Um, so that's that one. So yeah, can I go on to the next one, please, Simon? So this is another way that we want to connect you with our walkers and drive footfall to your businesses. And this is particularly for the experience providers, the food and drink providers, um, you know, the TICs, things like that. We're going to be launching our own Coast Path passports stamping scheme. So I don't know if any of you have ever been on the Camino de Santiago, it's amazing. The scheme is inspired by that and you walk along, I've done it, and you get your little um, book stamped and it's a great memory. So we're, we're going to set up a similar thing to engage walkers and drive footfall to you. This will be exclusive to Waymakers and we'll be working with our Waymaker friends to start with at key locations as stamping points. The only cost as a Waymaker to join will, um, if you want to have the official stamping kit, you can join in um, or you can create your own. So it's a fun way to drive football to you as businesses on the path. Um, so next slide, please, um, Simon. So that's what we can do for you and we that, by sharing our resources that we have as a charity. And in doing so, we will raise some money to also help to protect, care for and share the path. So what we'd like you to do as uh, Waymakers co to collaborate with us. So we have over 300 Waymakers today. So they all display their Waymakers sticker and logo in, in the window, hopefully. Um, we'd like you as Waymakers to link to our website. Um, so can you show us how they, um, Waymakers could link to our website, please, Simon? Next slide. This is one of our Waymakers. He's called um, Freshwell Camping. And he's done a great thing for us. He's signed up as a Waymaker and he's put us right on his website. So here we are. He's given a little bit of detail about us. Next slide, please, Simon. And then he's um, linked to our donate button, to our become a member button. Next slide, please, Simon. And he's talked about the ethical credentials, why it's important. Um, to him. Next slide, please. Um, so the next way you can uh, um, work with us is to through social media. Just show you a very quick example of that. So here's Biffin's Kitchen. Uh, he signed up as a Waymaker and then he went out walking. He hadn't been walking, he was a surfer and he decided to share the beautiful pictures uh, that he took that day with us and say how wonderful he thought the Southwest Coast Park was. We then shared that with our Facebook group, which we got great interaction on. And then he had a piece in National Geographic uh, featuring him as a place on the coast path. So working together, that was great for his small business, a food van in uh, North Devon. Um, so the next slide, please, Simon. 
Um, and also as Waymakers, we ask you to display uh, the, the leaflets that we send you. At the moment, these are membership leaflets, but what we're doing is we're rejigging these um, so that um, they will be entitled, Why Support Your Waymaker? So we will be encouraging people through our literature to drop into you, to follow the Waymaker signs and to engage with you as businesses on the path that make the great Southwest Coast Path experience because we couldn't do it without you. And I hope at the end of this presentation, you realize that you actually couldn't do it without the path and without us looking after the path as well. So I hope we can all work together to do that. One final slide. Um, the, um, next one, please. Um, so Genevieve's our fundraising manager. You've already met her. And there's lots of other different ways you can work with us as well with our, our fundraising campaign, Every Mile Matters, through sponsorship. We've got some great sponsors, Southwest Water, Fourth Glade, and uh, Southwest Business Council. You can become a mile maker and raise the 1,400 pounds it takes to look after each mile. And uh, you can join us on 1% for the planet, giving about 1% of profits to an environmental cause. We're now a registered charity on that. Or you can join us if you're an event organiser and give a pound back for every person who uses the path. So thank you very much. Can I have just the last slide, please, Simon? Oh, it's gone. Oh. Hello, I'm Sophie and this is my business, uh, Silver Cottage Bed and Breakfast. It's where we live. For us, joining the association as a Waymaker uh, felt really important. For us, predominantly, we, we joined because we love the path ourselves. As walkers, we think it's brilliant um, and uh, it, it's a really positive step um, to be able to support it. It's just uh, grown my business ex extremely well and it feels like a symbiotic relationship. We give, but they give as well, so it's perfect for us. Walkers are great. They have a very fine understanding of, of what we're doing. They, they like who we are and they, as far as I'm concerned, they've got a very light footprint on, on the earth, really. For us, they're the ideal guest. My name's Nick and I kind of lived in North Devon for about nine years and sort of run a surf school now for sort of about 16, 17 years. I'd say Pottsburgh is probably one of the best beaches in North Devon. It's such a sort of a hidden gem for people to kind of just take in the sort of scenery and enjoy the environment that's actually right on the doorstep because, you know, it's, it's nice obviously going out on a nice warm day, whatever, having a walk, but also you can stop off, you know, rent some kit, enjoy Pottsburgh, go and have a nice coffee, get on the water, enjoy the environment from a different angle, which people probably wouldn't do if they were sort of like trekking the coast. But also at the same time, you know, it's, it's, it's such a great, great thing to do, you know, just get on the water, just, you know, wash the worries away type thing. So we set up um, the Key Cafe about 12 months ago. It's um, the space that we had and it's in the heart of um, Braunton Village. And we're really proud to be Waymakers actually. It's um, being part of the whole South West Coast Park and this local community down here, being involved with local businesses and using their product to send their product in the cafe. It's all linked and it actually joins us to other communities along the South West Coast Park as well. Walkers are great for the business. Um, it's so great to meet so many of them coming in uh, from the coast path. Uh, we get so many people coming in for coffees and cakes, beers and burgers, and it's so nice to meet them, not only from around the southwest, but all around the country and internationally. Uh, we met some from Holland last week and from USA the week before, so it's great, yeah. I'm Kerry. I'm Tim. We own Little Roadway Farm Camping, and uh, we've been here for 26 years, a little family run campsite with me, him, and mum and dad, and our two kids. We love having walkers. Just when you hear the stories that they have when they've got to you, like where they've come from and the experiences they've had at other places. We have one recently that um, was really shocked when they came into our shop at how much produce we had in there, and they realised they didn't need to go anywhere else. They were, could just settle in for the night, have a sleep, and cook some food, and we'd got it all for them. So uh, yeah, the walkers are just amazing. Their stories are brilliant.
So thank you, Sarah, for that presentation. And um, oh, I love watching that video. I love seeing those wonderful waymakers. And those of you with a keen eye will have noticed some cameos from the team there. Um, <laughs> uh, so I don't have any questions on our Q&A here. If you do have one, please type it in there. Um, as soon as pos, um, but otherwise I think we're going to be wrapping up now. Um, just very quickly, I just wanted to raise um, a couple of questions we answered um, that were that were asked during the presentation. So uh, Marilyn asked how we are, are balancing the act of, of the wear and tear that we're getting from visitors and then what we're doing to look after the coast path. So Genevieve did briefly mention um, about our Every Mile Matters campaign. We've just hit our £100,000 milestone, but you can still donate to it. It's a three year campaign and we will continue to fundraise. And that is um, exactly what we're doing with that. We are fundraising to make sure that we have um, the funds available to fix and um, maintain and improve the coast path uh, as it gets that increased wear and tear from, vi um, from visitors. Uh, we also had a question about the guidebook, um, the actual number that we print. So we have uh, 6,500 are printed at the moment. They get sent directly out to our members. We also sell these on our online shop, uh, but it's a great way to actually promote uh, membership because the guidebook comes free. Um, and then we also, sell this in a, in a couple of different outlets across the southwest as waymakers you can access um guidebooks at, at a slightly lower price so you can sell them on to your customers if you want or of course you can promote membership for us so they get that as a, a sort of a free gift if you like and there's a great way to get people inspired and started on their journey um so yeah no more questions it looks like so i'll just pass over to you sarah to do a final thank you I really, I think you said it all actually, Becky. I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to come along. Thank you to our speakers, Nell and Russ. Thank you to our IT support, Simon and Jan. And um, just to say, we've got some special offers for friends and TICs and multis, which I'll send out afterwards if any of you are interested in that. And um, yeah, good luck uh, with the best staycation season ever, hopefully. And thank you again for coming. Thanks a lot. So I think we're going to close down now. Yeah.